Uh, Linda, I think you're going to say one or two words to start with. Can you hear me? No? Yes. Yeah. Oh, right, thank you. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And it's my um, privilege as Royal Dean to welcome everyone. I've no idea who's here tonight, um, but we are delighted that um, um, David Payne is able to be licensed tonight and we welcome his wife, Jo, and the family. Also his friend, Peter Hooper from his previous um, deanery and lots of people from his previous parish and um, his parish he served at um, in our diocese. And so we also want to welcome those um, from the benefice and the wider community. So that's all I need to say at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so we turn to our order of service. I hope you all know how to see it. Um, not quite sure it's going to happen, but I've got my copy in front of me. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and with, also you. with you. We've come together to worship God and to celebrate the ministry of the whole people of God in this place. God blesses his people with a rich variety of gifts, and it's our duty and our joy to use those gifts to extend God's kingdom in the world. This evening, we welcome David Payne, his wife, his wife, Joe, to this benefice and license David at the beginning of his ministry among us. Together, we dedicate ourselves to the service of God in this community and listen afresh to God's call to each one of us to go deeper into God, make new disciples and transform the community. So let us first wait humbly upon God, giving thanks for all that he has done to bring us to this moment. Mindful of God's blessings, let us now ask forgiveness for those times we've neglected God's call or failed in our service of one another and our communities. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive us when we make it hard for others to share our worship. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have, mercy. have mercy. Christ came to proclaim good news for all people. Forgive our silence in a world that does not understand good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centered hoarding of riches we have received. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And so may God, who loved the world so much that he gave his son to be our saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we gather in your name with thankfulness and praise for the continuing ministry of your church in these parishes. For all who've been raised up in times past to serve you here. And for your servant, David, called by you to this present task. Guide and strengthen all your faithful people, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I now invite the Archdeacon to, well, he can't literally bring forward, but, you know, <laughs> metaphorically bring forward your new priest in charge for presentation. Right, Reverend Father in God, I present to you David Payne, who, after prayerful consideration and due consultation, has been chosen to serve as priest in charge in this benefice. I present him to be licensed. Thank you. Right, Reverend Father in God, I, Peter Hooper, who have shared David's ministry in the Framland Deanery, warmly commend him to you and to the people of this benefice. I thank you for your presentation and your commendation. 
David, I greet you and your family and welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this deanery. You've been chosen as priest in charge, designate of Silso, Flitton and Pollux Hill. Do you believe that God has truly called you to this ministry? I believe that God has called me and with his help, I will serve faithfully in this ministry. People of God, is it your will that David should serve with you in this benefice? It, it is. is. Will you support and uphold him in this ministry? With, with the, the help, help of God, God we, we will. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I shall now license David Payne, clerk in holy orders, as priest in charge of this benefice. But first let declaration of assent be made and subscribed, and the oaths be taken according to law. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the holy scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth and its historic formularies, the 39 articles of religion, the book of common prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care. I, David Payne, do so affirm, and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, David Payne, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, David Charles Payne, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of St Albans and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. David, we'd like you to sign the document now, and when you've signed it, you uh, hold it up in front of the camera so we all make sure the deed has been done. We've all seen it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. And Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that through your Son you called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that each in their vocation and ministry may be an instrument of love. And give to your servant David, now to be licensed, the needful gifts of grace through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 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 So we now have our reading from Matthew 5. Reading's taken from Matthew 5, verse 13 to 20. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavour? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the laws of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear 
until its purpose is achieved. So, if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you'll be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. Sarah, thanks for reading that uh, lesson, which is the one that's set in the lectionary from, for this evening, and I want to speak on in just a moment. But let's pray first of all. Gracious God, take these written words of Scripture and by your Holy Spirit, turn them into living words to grasp our hearts, to blow apart our minds, and to lead us in your service, for we ask it in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, we've already had some uh, uh, welcomes, but it is lovely with 85 people on our call. Uh, of course, people from Framland Deanery, from um, Sandon and the Mundums and Sacum and Silso and Pullocks Hill and Flitton and uh, all, all stops to crew, I think. It's lovely to, to see you all coming from so many different backgrounds. And a special word of thanks to all those who've been uh, looking after the parishes during the vacancy and serving in different ways. And we're most grateful for all that you've uh, done. Let me just say a few words about David uh, to you. Uh, he trained for the ministry at St. John's College in Nottingham, uh, served his curacy at Horncastle in the Diocese of Lincoln, and then moved on to be vicar of Metheringham and then hospital chaplain at the Sherwood Forest NHS Trust. He then made one of the wisest moves of his life when he came to the Diocese of St Albans in 2006 and served until 2014 as Rector of Standham with the Mundans and Sacum. He then had a bit of an aberration, no I shouldn't say that, but he went off to the Diocese of Oxford and Leicester but now we welcome him back again and uh, 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 David and, and Joe, that's the second best decision you've, you've, you've made as well. David's gained a wide range of experience as a minister and priest of the gospel. Um, he's interested in all sorts of things, sport, especially football, films, music, family history research, and of course a special welcome to David's wife Joe and their grown-up, we shouldn't call them children, but Simon and, and Ben. It's lovely I think at least one of them is probably with us tonight. So uh, welcome to you too. In the church in which I was brought up, the vicar always used to end his sermons by turning to face east and quote one of the verses from that passage we've just heard read to us a moment ago from Matthew 5. He would say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. In fact, so familiar were the words that on one occasion when he was preaching, uh, in one sentence, he said, let your, and suddenly the whole congregation stood up thinking the sermon was over, quietly thanking God it had been so short, only for him to have to ask them to all sit down so he could finish it off. Well, those words are part of my childhood. They're terribly familiar. Let your light so shine before men. But it's easy because of the sheer familiarity to forget just how extraordinary those words are, various words in, in that gospel tonight. You, he says, you are the light of the world. You, the people of Silso, Pullox Hill, Flitton, Sandon, the Mundans, Framland Deanery, you, he says, are the light of the world. It's an outrageous thought when you pause for a moment and reflect on it. Indeed, it may not feel like that as we look at ourselves, sometimes few in number, sometimes we're a bit weary in the Lord's service, but that's how Jesus Christ sees us. Even if we think the lamp is burning rather dimly, Jesus says, you, my friends, are the light of the world. Of course, the background to this are some other words in the gospel where Jesus says nearly the same, but it's rather different, where he makes the audacious claim for himself. 
one of the I am sayings in the Gospel of John, I am the light of the world. I guess many of us find that rather easier to imagine than when he says that we're the light of the world. After all, we see as we read the Gospels that there was something immensely attractive and compelling uh, about Jesus. He was someone who didn't just go along with the status quo, but had time for all people, especially those on the edges of society. In an age where children were a mere possession, he gave them dignity and sat them on his knee and listened to them. This was a man who wasn't impressed by outward signs of piety, but could look right into the hearts of the people that he, he could see. And, and he came with such penetrating understanding. This is the one who, instead of living in fear, opened himself up to all those he encountered in the most extraordinary vulnerability. And this is the one who, despite the most extreme provocation, didn't retaliate, but instead responded in total, complete, utter self-giving love. We, we can believe that when he says, I'm the light of the world. And of course, that's why people flocked him, some excited because his example was so compelling. But also when we read the Gospels, we find others were deeply fearful, realising that they came close to this light. Uh, they, in all their brokenness, would be shown up for who they, they were. But now, in this passage in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, we see Jesus taking that very same phrase and turning it round. He, he looks round at the motley bunch of disciples who'd come from different backgrounds. They couldn't get on. They fell out with one another and all those things. And he says, from now on, you, you are the light of the world. It's through your lives, he says, that others are going to see my truth. It's through your generosity that others are going to glimpse the generosity of God. It's through your forgiveness that others will see that there's a way to be forgiven, that we don't have to be bound by our past, however we've messed things up in the past. And by gum, some of us have really messed up things in the past. Jesus said it's through the way that you treat others that they'll glimpse the way of the kingdom of God. When it's put that baldly, it can seem terrifying that God allows so much to rest on our shoulders. But that's both the privilege and the responsibility of being Christ's followers, bearing the light of Christ and passing it on. David, you're coming to three churches, uh, and I know them a little bit. I've been to worship on a Sunday. I've met some of the people, and there's some lovely people in these congregations, people who are real lights of the world, and they're looking to you to support them and to help them as they're going to be lights in the communities and in the homes and the streets and the villages in which they live. To be lights that we hold up to light on the path, to be a light to pass on to others. In fact, can you remember those scenes during the lead up to the Olympic Games when the, the, the torch, the flaming torch is lit in Athens? And then relays of runners take it across the world, passing the light on so that the light will spread out. It's an image of what we're called to do. That, of course, was the distinctive thing about those early generations of Christians, which made such an impact on uh, the early centuries and on the ancient world. People from different social backgrounds, different races, even different religions suddenly began to glimpse something in Christ and were told coming the, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, they start to share their lives, breaking bread in their homes, giving thanks to God, living out the Jesus way of life, being light to one another. This isn't a light to hide. Jesus tells us this is a light to the world, not to be hidden under some sort of... Uh, uh, some sort of shade. This is to be a light that's going to go out into the whole of the creative order. We're living in sad and challenging times at the moment, and many of you share with me what it is to be in this second lockdown 
and and really regretting that at least 30 or 40 or 50 of us couldn't be together with David and Joe tonight actually in church. That's what we've been planning until 10 days ago. And yet the extraordinary thing is in the heart of both the first lockdown and this lockdown, one of the amazing things has been the way that so many people who are followers of Jesus have been light in their communities. It was extraordinary in those early weeks when uh, we felt we had to actually close down the church buildings to send out a strong message of how important it was. The, the number of places that just started piling up food supplies in our church porches to be just local little food banks. Uh, the numbers of people who set up uh, groups of people to go and collect prescriptions for those who were self-shielding. Uh, the people who were setting up phone uh, rings to make sure everybody was getting a call at home and so many of those things have already sprung back into action. This is the very stuff of, of being the light of Christ. David, as you come to join the good people of Silso and Pullox Hill and Flitton, Jesus reminds us that we're not only to follow him who is the light of the world, but that we too are to bear that torch, to mirror that light to the communities in which we live. My prayer is that together and with confidence you will know the gift of God's grace, that you'll not only be lights shining in the darkness, but you'll pass it on with joy to others. Jesus said, you, you the Christians of Silso and Flitton and Pullock's Hill, you are the light of the world. Amen. We just keep a moment of science, silent reflection. Now, sadly, we can't sing this great hymn, uh, one of the most ancient hymns that we routinely sing, a wonderful invocation of God, the Holy Spirit. Um, but what we can do is we can say it together. Um, I know I won't hear most of you, and it's probably best if we keep the mics off, but you say it along with me. Although if you want to, you can hum it along as well, if you, and then pray the words in your mind. But we pray this as a lovely invocation to God, the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, and lighten with celestial fire. Thou, the anointing spirit art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Thy blessed unction from above is comfort, life and fire of love, Enable with perpetual light the dullness of our blinded sight. Anoint and cheer our soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep far our foes, give peace at home. Where thou art guide, no ill can come. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and thee of both to be but one that through the ages all along, this may be our endless song. Praise to thy eternal merit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm now going to uh, read the license uh, for David as he begins this next phase and ministry of his calling. Alan, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of St Albans, to our beloved in Christ, David Charles Payne, Clark. Greeting. Where is the benefice of Silso, Pullox, Hill and Flitton within our diocese and jurisdiction has become vacant? And is at present destitute of an incumbent, we do hereby grant you license and authority to serve during our pleasure, or until the admission of an incumbent to the said benefice, whichever period shall be the shorter, as priest in charge of the said benefice, 
and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office. And so we commend to you, almighty God, humbly praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that his blessing may rest upon you and upon your work, in testimony of which we have hereunto set our hand and caused our Episcopal seal to be affixed this 10th day of November, in the year of our Lord 2020, in the 12th year of our translation, and in the 19th year of our consecration. David, through the post, you're going to receive a share in the cure of souls, this license, which is both yours and mine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now a prayer for David and for all those who minister in these parishes. Mighty God, who for the salvation of the world gives his people many gifts and ministries, stir up in you the gifts of his grace, sustain you in your own ministry in this place, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to take off your mutes. I'm going to present to you your new <laughs> priest in charge, and we're going to greet him. David, it's your. You better turn your mics off again, David. It's your opportunity to uh, to give the notices. We're not letting anything go on this day. Thank you very much indeed, Bishop. And thank you uh, for that lovely uh, round of applause. Um, I, I would like to thank everybody for their prayers and their expressions of uh, goodwill. We really feel that we've been sent and received in, in love back to the Diocese of St Albans, uh, and that's been lovely. So thank you, uh, all of you, for that. I don't really know what's happening because we're making it up as we go along. But we are looking forward to uh, returning to our broadcast worship this Sunday with the virtual vicar uh, operating in our, in our benefice. Uh, and we look forward to presenting a service uh, in conjunction with the other ministers. If you are one of my new near neighbours, look out for me because in the next 10 days, I promise I will be down your street praying for you and the people that you live amongst. So point me out, wave, shout things at me. And uh, I look forward to at least meeting some of you in, uh, in that way. Finally, I invite you to join with me in following the Archbishop's encouragement to pray each day at six o'clock um, to respond to the coronavirus situation. If you need help with any prayers to use in that, please give me a ring or send me an email. Happy to, to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. I'm going to invite us to share the peace and when we get to it I'm going to suggest we all simply wave at one another and um, beam the peace towards each other. We are the body of Christ and the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> And also with you. God bless you. God bless. In fact, I pinched David's line. I'm sorry. You should have said that uh, bit. There we go. I now invite you to affirm together your commitment to the task of ministry, witness and service to which God is calling you all. David. Be amongst us as an evangelist who rejoices to bring new Christians to baptism and to share with them the living water, Jesus Christ himself. Will you share with me in the ministry of making new disciples to which we are called? Together, by God's grace, we will share the good news of Christ with the world and make new disciples. David. Be among us as a teacher who studies the scriptures, proclaims the word, and teaches the faith. 
Will you share with me in the regular study and proclamation of God's word, that together we may bring the light of faith to those in darkness, kindle the fire of love upon the earth, and open the door of hope to the world. Together, together by, by God's, God's grace, grace we, will we will go deeper, deeper into, God into God and share, and share the news of Christ with, with the world. The world. David, be among us as a president at the Eucharist, presiding among us when we celebrate the Lord's death and resurrection. Will you share regularly with me in the sacrament of Holy Communion, that we may grow in unity and love, and together proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Together by God's grace. We, we will seek to transform the communities and be the living body of Christ. I pledge myself to care for the community that gathers here, to share with them the word of God and the work of ministry, to celebrate with them the sacraments of the new covenant, and to encourage them in their discipleship. We pledge ourselves to pray and pray care and for our community, to share, share with all, all the word of God and the work, the work of ministry, ministry. To, celebrate to celebrate with all, with all the, the sacraments, sacraments of the new, new covenant, covenant and to encourage, and to encourage all, all in, in their discipleship. discipleship. Together, Together we, we pledge to make, to make this a place faith, where Christian, Christian people, people are, equipped are equipped for their, their life, life and, and witness, witness. In, in God's, God's world. world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for the gift of faith by which we are called to love and serve you and one another. We give thanks for the life of this benefice and for the witness of those who have worshipped before us in this place. We ask for your blessing on us now as we look to the future with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Sustainer God, we pray for all those who have been given responsibility for the ordering of our parish life, and we give thanks to the ministry of our church wardens and PCC members. As we welcome David, as our priest in charge, help us to grow together in love and trust and guide us in using our gifts so that our community of faith may flourish and live life in all its fullness. Enable us, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to build on our heritage of faith in this place so that we may grow in Christian wisdom and your love may reach many more people in this community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. Living God, we pray for the people we are called to serve and we bring before you the needs of this church. We pray for the leaders of our community that they may act with integrity and be given the spirit of wisdom and compassion so that your kingdom may come in ways which enrich our common life. We ask for your blessing on our homes, on all those who live and work here. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our places of learning, for our nurseries, schools and colleges, that our young people may learn to see you in the beauty of the world around them and discover your creative spirit in their work and their play. May those who learn and those who teach discover their true value and potential and may we serve one another after Christ's example. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. And to God, as we step out afresh to live your love and serve Christ in the world, we ask that your guiding hand would hold us fast and lead us confidently through all that life has to offer. 
Bless us as we seek to make new disciples. Inspire us as we worship and ponder your word so that we might go deeper into God. Encourage us so that our lives might transform the community. Living God, Living God draw, us, draw us, deeper us deeper into your, into your love. Jesus, Jesus our, our Lord, Lord send, us send us to care and serve. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit make, us make us heralds of your good news. Stir us, stir us strengthen, strengthen us, teach, teach and inspire us, us to live your love with generosity and joy, imagination, imagination and courage for the, sake for the sake of your world and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us, us our trespasses as we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we ask now God for his blessing. May God the Father draw you deeper into his love. God the Son empower you to serve the world. God, the Holy Spirit, strengthen you to proclaim the gospel. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And then normally at this stage, having sung a hymn, we would have flung the doors of the church building open and we would have looked outwards and we would have prayed God's blessing upon all the people in our communities. And so unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, a big thank you to everybody who's put this service uh, together. I'm sorry we can't be gathering over refreshments and a glass of wine or something, but, well, maybe we can, but not together in the same building. But uh, thank you so much for coming to be part of this, and God bless you, and thank you for all you're doing.